a charity that crowdfunded the Muslim burial of the Clapham chemical attacker Abdul Azidi. Raised funds using a false name, according to the Mail on Sunday. The Afghan national was granted asylum after supposedly converting to Christianity, but was buried last week in an Islamic ceremony which was organised by the Muslim Burial Fund. The charity raised more than £6,000 to lay Azadi to rest under the name Abdul Wahid, with their appeal brushing over his 2018 conviction for sexual assault and the grisly events that led to his death. Azadi led police on a three-week manhunt after attacking a mother and her children with an alkali substance in January. His body was later recovered from the River Thames. Now, in response to the newspaper investigation, the Muslim Burial Fund says, regardless of the person's background, whatever they have been accused of, doing whatever their faith, as a charity, we will only bury Muslims. Now, Zaidi was given permission to stay in the UK after he claimed he would be at risk if he was returned to Afghanistan as a Christian convert. And I think this raises a whole range of issues relating to, first of all, your religion and whether or not something is authentic. Secondly, whether people who are in this country, whether illegally or opportunistically, are using religion as a front in order to stay here. Mm -hmm. And the role of those religions, and I don't care which ones they are, which are being used as a front by people who, who know how to work the system. Exactly. Combined with a, a real problem that we have when it comes to charities, that charities put a, a religious banner and then they become untouchable. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to have a genuine system that looks at, of course, every charity needs to be able to demonstrate what they do, and some are religious by nature. They need to be as verified as anybody else, and I also think that we need to make sure that the system isn't being gamed, because it clearly is. This is, well, against, this is against the law, isn't it? You can't, I can't say, look, I'm, I'm crowdfunding money for this great, for, he's a saint. Uh, don't tell them what his name is and pretend he's not no, a rapist. It's, it's called fraud. It's, it's fraud. Well, I, mean, this is, I, I want to report the uh, Muslim burial fund to the police. Well, I mean, it's not very Muslim to lie either, so I don't know why they're saying... like They, they put out this statement it's as if they've done something the good. Law. They've taken advantage of the goodwill of the people that mm -hmm. patronise this, this charity. So, obviously, that's, that's a bigger problem. But I, I think the whole Abdul Azidi case just shows why we need to really tackle this kind of charity industrial complex we have with our asylum system. I, I, I may hold a controversial opinion, but I think if you're a single working age male, you should not be entitled to asylum. I think asylum mainly should be prioritized for women and children fleeing war torn zones that are, are most likely to be the victims of sexual based violence. Mm. And these hundreds of men that we're seeing coming across boats every single day disgust me. And I think the people that are so against the saying, oh, but they're genuine asylum seekers are either ignorant or stupid, or they generally hate the yeah, British public that have to, have to deal the, with the uh, sentimentality of out of this whole debate. People need to um, know that they... Uh, oh, my mother's ringing me again. Oh, hi. Yeah. Um, Give them they need to know that people are genuine because people have yes, to believe in the system and they and have to be checked uh, for what they... for the reasons that they're coming over. And a case like this gives asylum, which is in, in some cases, you know, a genuine need that we should be proud of giving people asylum. It gives it a terrible name. Now, there's a separate question about what the hell the Muslim Burial Council was up to. I have, weirdly, this may sound, some element of sympathy in the sense that if you're trying to bury someone for whom nobody would give a donation to have them buried, but they still deserve a decent burial. No, they don't. Maybe you cut corners. I don't excuse you don't it. Lie. I don't think it was the right thing. They don't lie, and they well, don't deserve a decent I don't think it was the right thing to do, but I could see some motivation behind it. Well, yeah, I, I, who, who knows? Lie. However, let me just bring in uh, some words from the Home Secretary, James Cleverly. He's told churches they shouldn't allow asylum seekers to game the system by converting to Christianity. Uh, in his stern Easter message, Cleverly has warned that allowing people to exploit the system risks detracting from the invaluable work Christians and the church do every day from society. And you know, the, to my mind, these are just like empty words. That's pointless. With more exactly. empty words, when he goes to talk about the fact that, um, and as you referenced here, 4,993 um, people have arrived across uh, into the UK on small boats across the English Channel so far this year. In three um, months. Uh, with winter. those numbers swelling by 349 people. Uh, and this is the highest number we've had for the first three months of a year. I mean, it is absolutely astonishing. This continues, and yet you have weak words from the Home Secretary, who uh, he might be right in what he says, but he's not doing anything. Well, he's not right in what he says. You should take what churches say. Churches' endorsements of asylum seekers should mean nothing. That's the point. You shouldn't have a go at the churches. By the way, it's ironic he's talking to church leaders when these same church leaders didn't find it fit to have Abdul Azidi sit in the church by himself. He always had to have a chaperone because of his sexual convictions. But really? somehow, really? yes, of yeah. course that. They, they um, gave okay, the congregation... Because it was a stem. danger to the other female... Exactly. Congregation members, no, everyone uh, and he went on to gain asylum after that, which is 
ridiculous. Thanks. But I, I, I totally agree with Esther that what, what we've got to do, by all means, let churches are always going to convert people no matter what their reasons. If you knock on the door and say, could you convert me to your... They'll do it. It's a so you can't religion, stop yeah. them doing it. It's in their DNA. What we need to do, uh, we need to inform uh, migrants uh, that uh, converting to Christianity, or for that matter, to any religion, will, is not a factor. It's fa a no-no. It's yeah. not exactly. a factor. No, it's not a factor in whether or not you're allowed to stay. System. By all means, convert to Christianity. Well but if you put. think it's going to affect your application, then you are wrong. Well put, Kevin. Well, well put. Now.